Hi, everyone. My name is Cliff Wishman. Um, I'm going to be talking today about OpenSwitch. Um, a little bit about myself. I'm working at Dell EMC. I'm a distinguished engineer. I'm also the OpenSwitch TSC chair. Um, so I'm very fortunate and excited to be part of this, uh, this open switch project. I think it's, it's going to be wonderful for, for everyone, really getting a lot of innovation and open networking for, I think, for everybody. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> and then uh, maybe one more, if that's okay. So what is OpenSwitch? OpenSwitch is a modular, scalable, um, open networking operating system. So it, uh, it is based upon a standard Linux distribution, um, which then, of course, gives you a lot of applications, a lot of integration with standard tools and standard, um, standard environments that you've come to know and love from your servers. And it really kind of moves that server world into the switch. Um, in that, in that uh, Linux distribution, you can use things like uh, Golang, Python, you can, use, you can use on the switch, you can use Dockers, you can use Pyth uh, a lot of very interesting Python libraries and Python APIs for even to doing uh, really cool AI, actually. So again, a lot of that stuff is available on the switch now that wasn't available before. Um, OpenSwitch does have a very rich programming uh, rich programming interface and actually you have REST, you have C, C++, um, Python. So it really enables a lot of DevOps applications and a DevOps integration. Um, OpenSwitch does also provide a lot of choice. So choice of hardware, uh, choice of um, ASICs. So again, really kind of rounding out um, rounding out what customers are looking for in their data center. Again, giving you the option to find the best switch or the best uh, ASIC or the best platform for what you need. Uh, next slide. So this slide really goes through the arch architecture. And so again, we start at the bottom. And uh, with regards to the hardware, we have a uh, Dell EMC, for instance, and all of the Dell EMC platforms will be supported by OpenSwitch. We have uh, other ODM and OEM manufacturers, such as Acton, Celestica. We also know uh, that uh, Broadcom has been working with people like DNI as well on uh, ODM and OEM manufacturers. On the ASIC side, we actually are looking at having a lot of ASIC vendors supporting uh, OpenSwitch as well. So we have um, Barefoot, we have Broadcom, we have Cavium, we have Marvell, we have Mellanox. And actually, there's a lot of other ASIC vendors and silicon on chip vendors that are being contacting us as well that are very excited to get into the project. Again, they, they just like to have an OS that actually can run on their box and really show the power of, of their ASIC. On top of that hardware, we have a standard Linux distribution, as we talked about before. And this is unmodified. So again, you can do your app get installs of standard tools and standard applications. Again, if you wanted to run Dockers, um, you want to run VirtualBox. <laughs> it's all available as long as you have the space and capacity on your switch. Oh, maybe a little bit too far. Um, again, in that standard Linux distribution, again, you have access to all those, uh, those tools and everything that you're familiar with from your server environments. On top of that standard Linux distribution, then we have something called the OPX base. And that OPX base really ties in the more of the specific switching hardware um, and the Swiss specific switching ASICs into standard Linux. So again, it gives you that, uh, that, that tie-in capability. Um, when you take a look at the OPX base on the, uh, the very left-hand side, you'll see the PaaS, or the Platform Adoption System, Adoption <laughs> Service, sorry. Uh, and the PaaS exports a number of object models for things like power supplies, fans, temperature control, and through the through the, uh, the object models exposed by PaaS, you can write a lot of services or, uh, or applications to do things like a temperature control, um, even sending out alerts to other places in your network based upon uh, overheat or temperature conditions. The PaaS uses something called the SDI, and the SDI is a very simple interface that, uh, that abstracts access to whatever devices are sitting below. 
So the PaaS allows you to tie in uh, your existing drivers if you have existing drivers on an ODM hardware, or if you need to write new drivers, that, that SDI layer can be used as well. And the SDI layer, it, it's really designed to be implemented by really uh, by just like a few days of effort. Like again, we, uh, we've designed that SDI to be very consumable and very, um, very easy to implement for different platforms. We actually have had uh, some success successes of other platform vendors such as uh, Mellanox that have, that have even ported that SDI into their platforms. Um, again, and they've done some demos for the community. On the other side, we have the network adoption service, and the network adoption service is the component that takes the, the networking pieces and, uh, and integrates that into the, the ASIC as well. So the network adoption service has a number of models um, for things like lags, uh, quas, ACLs, um, uh, port management, hashing, um, switch attributes like a number of, uh, maximum number of ECMPs in an ECMP group. All that's available uh, exposed through the NAS. And then the NAS uses something that we call the network device interface to actually communicate to the actual ASIC. So today's NDI, for instance, is using a Dell OCP SI uh, implementation, which is a, it's a close to a 094, 095 uh, right now. So again, through that NDI layer, you can, uh, you can have a variety of ASICs tied in. And again, the NDI layer allows us to take multiple versions of SI and support them all, for instance. Or if we have other, uh, other ways that need to be integrating uh, ASICs, that might be also available through that NDI layer. The NAS is also responsible for integrating with Linux. So there's a component in the NAS called the NAS Linux, which takes the Netlink events um, and takes other things in Linux and converts them into CPS objects and then di drives them into the NAS. And that gives you the, the ability to really uh, innovate and uh, support innovation in Linux. So again, you could have multiple versions of the NAS Linux supporting things like switch dev um, or other, other things that are useful in uh, in Linux kernel as things uh, move forward. On top, uh, maybe next slide, sorry. Uh, one more button. Oh. Um, on, top of the, uh, on top of the OPX base, we have the OPX control. And these are the protocol suite provided by, uh, by SnapRoute. So again, it's uh, again that other OCP project. So they've taken their, their L3 and L2 services and uh, provide them as part of this OPX control layer. And they, uh, they've also provided a, a REST interfaces and documentation about how to program all of the routes or other, other protocol aspects that they provided. On top of the OPX control, we have our OPX application ecosystem. And that application ecosystem is being developed as we speak, and it's also being, uh, again, um, oh, no, it's just being developed as we speak. We're working to build an ecosystem of partners up there, and we have some uh, solutions that uh, you'll be seeing very soon, such as the Ansel, like uh, Kubernetes integration. Um, in that application ecosystem, you also have things like the Ansible playbooks, and you can use standard Linux Ansible playbooks again, because again, we're based upon, uh, we do support standard Linux networking. Um, next slide. So uh, in this slide, we'll just talk about the contributors of the different layers. So in the OPX applications, we're looking at that application ecosystem, really working with the community to kind of build this innovative, um, innovative community. Um, we have the OPX control that it's provided by SnapRoute, and that has the REST interfaces and the routing suites and the control suites. And we have OPX base um, that is contributed by Dell, and that provides the, uh, the NPU abstractions and the platform abstractions, and also provides that rich programming uh, interfaces through uh, C++, Python, and Go, really allowing people to write their, their fancy applications. Um, in addition to that, we also have a number of ODM, OEM, and NPU vendors providing, of course, their SDKs and platform drivers. So why OpenSwitch? <laughs> so OpenSwitch is, uh, has been designed to handle the base use cases for a data center. Um, out of the box, you should have, uh, you should see the, 
whatever, like the basic BGP support that you need to get things running. Um, it does use standard Linux and then also gives you the ability to tie in your Ansible playbooks or other, other uh, centralized control. Uh, feature velocity. So again, it's a modular operating system with actually a number of players contributing at different layers. And that really allows us to take the best and also get a lot more velocity but not having one company kind of doing everything. So again, uh, it's modular, very programmable, and uh, really allowing and supporting application integration and applications um, and that application ecosystem. Um, the total cost of ownership savings that you get with this platform, again, is that you take your server engineers or the people that have been supporting your DevOps environments, and that actually now they can support your network switches. So again, you don't need to train them anymore on esoteric network commands, um, don't need to worry about uh, complicated ACLs, complicated quas. They can actually do, um, you can take your, again, the people that are used to programming servers and move them right into this environment. For instance, if they wanted to set up interfaces, you can actually go into your ETC interfaces uh, folder and you can have your interface configuration there. Again, it's, a, it's very easy for your, your server people to actually work in this environment. And finally, it's, a, it's supported by a number of people in the community. So we have, of course, Dell EMC that's providing that base. And again, that base is used in our, our fully working, our, our products. Um, we have SnapRoad also delivering their L2 and L3 services that are used in a real product. Um, we have ASIC vendors providing their hardened uh, SDKs, and we have ODM and ODM, OEM manufacturers also providing their drivers. So again, it's supported by a number of people, and again, it is supported. Uh, next. Yeah, so this slide just talks about a, a little bit about the computer contributors in the uh, Open Switch project. So we have, a, like again, from ASIC vendors, we have things like uh, Barefoot, Broadcom, Cavium, uh, Mellanox, um, there's Extreme Networks, who's, a, who's an application vendor. Um, we have SnapRoute, of course. Um, and then uh, we have things like uh, Actin, we have Nephos Quattro Networks, TerraLogic that have all been involved. And we have uh, input from companies like LinkedIn that kind of help us develop those use cases that, that are very useful for, uh, for the, the market. Um, so for the roadmap, the, the, in the first quarter, we have uh, delivered the initial platform, like the initial open switch implementation. It does run on the Dell S6000 platform. That initial integration effort has a L2 and L3 services provided by SnapRoute. It has that OPX base, and it has, a, of course, a huge amount of documentation online. In addition, we also have a VM that can be used for demoing and prototyping. And uh, you can write even experiment with some applications there. The second quarter, we're going to be focusing in on uh, more ODM and OEM uh, manufacturers, and also looking at bringing in more uh, ASIC support. And if you're uh, if you're available for the ONS, you'll see a lot of extra demos coming out with uh, with these different ASIC vendors and different platform vendors. Um, so the documentation in GitHub. So again, uh, all this stuff is freely available online. We have uh, the GitHub uh, location, which is open switch. Um, underneath that uh, GitHub location, all the new repos have OPX dash in the beginning. And, uh, and the start point is this OPX build, and that tells you how to get started, how to, to download things. We use things like the repo tool. We use Docker's for compiling. All that's indicated inside of that, uh, that OPX build repo. And, uh, and that's what we have as the introduction. Um, is there any questions? Yeah, please. Hello? Hello? The open switch, does it have support for both top of the rack as well as modular switches? Yeah. What do you mean by modular switches? Uh, multi oh, yeah. Yeah, there is support uh, inside of, yeah, there is support for both top of rack and switches. In fact, uh, 
when we talk about the OPX base, there's something called the CPS layer. And actually, in that CPS layer, we even have a, it does work with fabric, a, a cross switch fabric. So you, you can actually configure groups of switches together, and then you can talk to them all through that, uh, that CPS layer as almost as if they are local. So you can do things like register for notifications or provide uh, configuration. So again, uh, the platform supports it. Uh, we don't have any implementation of a fabric today in OpenSwitch, but that is something that, that is definitely supportable. Thank you. Thanks. And I'll, here we are. What is the testing strategy for multiple ASIC vendors? Like you have a bunch of them, so what is the strategy when you check in the code and stuff? Yeah, that's a good question. So we, we have an initial test framework that has been provided online. Um, and that's based upon some Ansible test suites. So we actually have the ability of, of the ASIC vendors to take OpenSwitch itself, run it on their platforms, and actually run the test suite um, that we're building up there. So you'll see more innovation in that side over time. We're also looking at qualification labs as part of OpenSwitch. So again, that's a, it's a very interesting part. Um, like qualifications are very important. And uh, we're just going to be looking at, uh, at providing that over time, like the qualification labs. So actually, I had a question. In, in your Q2, you mentioned ODM switches, um, OCP switches? Um, yeah, that's my understanding is yes. They, good point, actually. There are OCP switches. In fact, um, maybe, even, uh, maybe even Zubin can mention that. OCP contributed switch. Yeah, and we are looking at also, uh, again, if we can, we'll be working to try to get this on uh, the Wedge 100, for instance. And I think that would also be a wonderful platform to show this, uh, the capabilities and power of this uh, open switch platform. So it is very important for, for us to have more OCP switch support, for sure. Your uh, system device interface SDI layer, so mm -hmm. do you recommend using the Linux standard drivers and the interfaces available, or, or, or are they vendor provided proprietary drivers and interfaces? Yeah, that's a very good question. So we've had a lot of discussions on, on drivers, especially um, with OpenSwitch. So, um, so we would recommend if you have a, if the vendors do like if the vendors do have a uh, a driver that already exists in Linux today, then it's great to use that. And in fact, the SDI does work really well with that. You can tie in SDI into a sysfs sysfs interface that's already existing. Um, if the driver doesn't exist, uh, we wouldn't recommend uh, system vendors or uh, or ODM platforms to provide kernel loadable modules or kernel modifications for that support. It would be better to have user-based uh, modules. And that's just because you don't want to force the customer to use any specific Linux kernel version. There has been some cases recently, for instance, where there was a kernel vulnerabilities, actually just uh, last week, <laughs> with uh, privilege escalations. Again, you don't want to be involved with uh, causing your customers uh, like harm by not having them patch that kernel as soon as possible. So again, it's better for us not to play in the kernel. In fact, uh, open switch today for the S6000 only has two kernel loadable modules, and that's just for the, the ASIC hardware itself. And those things, we've actually provided a compiling environment so that you can quickly spin them up again if the customer really needs that done in a very short time. Again, it's, it's a very good question. Any other questions? All right. Um, oh, yeah. No, go ahead. No, no. You oh, you want yeah, to... we were just going to say that if anybody else has any more questions, we actually have cards at the booth, and uh, we can give you a, a more deep dive on how things work. So just uh, come drop by. We can give you probably a, a nice overall look and feel. And again, you can get playing cards. You can get nice cards and get the proper information of where you need to go. All right. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks.